Hi, this, you probably recognise this piece of old equipment uh, if you've done physics at school uh, a long time ago. Uh, this is a Wheatstone bridge uh, and it's a really interesting thing. It's quite dull when you're doing physics as a school kid but when you look at it it's actually quite an interesting thing in how that it can actually measure an unknown resistance. But we'll come back to that. Now Wheatstone bridges are generally drawn like this uh, where we have a supply here and our four resistors round here and one of these resistors will be an unknown. Let's try this one. This is our unknown resistance, our X. And we have a galvanometer in the centre here. A galvanometer is just measuring a plus and minus current or voltage here. It's a little bit simpler if we draw it slightly differently. Everything becomes a little bit more apparent when, when you look at this diagram. So here we have two potential dividers on the supply. So the voltage here is fixed by these two resistors and the voltage here is fixed by these two resistors. If R1 and R3 are the same values, and the voltage can be set here that the voltage is equal to zero, then we have to assume that R2 is the same as Rx. This is independent of whatever voltage or current is flowing in the circuit. So that's a really handy tool. Because normally you would have to, to work out what resistor value is, you have to know the current and the voltage across it. With this setup, we don't need to know the voltage. In fact, all we don't, we don't even need to know the current, other than that the difference here is zero, either voltage or current. A little setup here. I've got a Wheatstone bridge built using two known resistor values here, which are both 5.1K. And I have a supply fed into this. And as I say, we don't really care what the supply is, just that it's a low voltage here. I've got this decade resistance box. So this is a fairly accurate resistor, which I can switch in different values in times, in times 10 ohms. And we've got a meter here, a digital multimeter hooked up, set on voltage just now. And the auto ranges, so it's quite useful. So if I put a supply voltage onto this, it tells me I have currently got minus 1.3 volts sitting on here, so my bridge is not balanced. So I can try and adjust this, res un the resist this resistor here to balance the bridge. So if I try changing, what I want to do is take that voltage up to zero. So it's still going up, still going up. On. Now it's gone to positive, so I don't want it to go positive at the moment. I want to find where zero is, so I'll take it back to the last point and then change the next decade. So that was the K ohms, and now we want hundreds of ohms. So I'll take it down. Still going down. It's getting low, and it goes positive again. So it's my last reading in the negative range, and coming right down now to the times 10 ohm. So we are now... Should be going down. Yeah, it's still going down. And we've now reached more or less zero. I can <coughs> I could you know, I could try it this way. So find there we go, absolutely zero. So we've got a resistance set here of four, seven, and zero. So that's in tens ohms. So that's our 4,700 ohm resistor is the value here now. And because our two values are the same here, we know that now is that value of resistance. So we've discovered what our unknown resistance value is by balancing this bridge. So that's that resistor here. This is our unknown resistance. And out of just curiosity, what does the meter make of it as a resistor? Four point seven one K. So we're pretty close with our, our box here. And the be argument who is more accurate? <laughs> 
Now if we go back to our drawing one last bit that's quite interesting. If I redraw the um, original potential divider arrangement I showed there, now we draw it as this, and it's the reason why I'm doing the US standard resistors here. This zigzag line suggests a continual resistance wire, which I can then move a pointer along the surface of. So this time I have a known resistor R1, but I have an unknown resistor and it's now this side Rx, but I can move this across this potential here to change the, the, the zero point. So what I'm doing is looking, moving along here to balance the bridge by finding a zero volt or zero current point here and then I'll have a measurement on along here. So now we're dealing with a length L rather than a voltage. We just want to work out what the um, the distance is and that will give us a distance uh, at some point between these top and bottom. And this will show there's a ratio, it's a ratio uh, for for the distance will also equal the ratio for the, re for the unknown resistor which is quite a powerful thing. We've not talked in terms of voltage or, or current. We're now talking in terms of a distance ratio, calculating an unknown resistor. All we need to know is the balance point where we have zero current or zero voltage across that. Okay, so this time I now have our uh, Wheatstone bridge connected up. So I've got a supply across here and our meters connected across this point to this wire. This is our resistance wire. You notice there's a half meter stick here. You can sometimes get bigger ones with full meter uh, sticks. Obviously it's like more accurate if you've got that larger size. This is fine for demonstration. So we've got a known resistance again 5.1k ohms and this is our unknown resistance here. Now I just have to find, I've put a, a blade of a screwdriver here so I get a good point on here and I'm looking again for the zero point. So at this point I've got a minus and if I come down this side I've got a positive. So somewhere in the middle of this I should have a point where it becomes zero. So a minus here, minus, we're dropping, minus 0 0.03, 0 0.02. And there we go, we've gone positive here, so we've overshot slightly, so we'll go back a little bit. And there we're going down to zero there. So if I look at where we are on zero, it's 27.2 millimeters here on the scale. So from that, I should be able to calculate the unknown resistance. Okay, I've redrawn the diagram so it's the same layout as the bridge. It's the same one just turned around. So we've got R1, which we know is R1 is equal to 5.1k ohms. And we know we've set this balance for zero. Uh, and when we've got it for zero, we know our length for this part portion is 27.2 centimetres. We know this is a total of 50 centimetres, so our difference here for the other part is 22.8 centimetres. Therefore, we can say then effectively that 5.1 over Rx is equal to 27.2 over 22.8. And we can cross multiply that out, which would give us our x 27.2 is equal to 116.28, and that gives us a value for our x as 4.275 k ohms. We can also just simply do it by calculate our s by our x by. Uh, Dividing 27 by 22 and work it out that way, you'll come up to the same answer. Also, note I didn't have to change our values at all. We could run with 1.5k uh, because it means our answer is in k ohms here, and we didn't have to change this to centimeters because we're both in centimeters, it's a ratio, it doesn't matter, and we didn't need to know current or voltage on the supply. We just had to be happy that we had found a balance point. So a very powerful little method. So what was the mystery value?